editor-in-chief of Visegrad Insight, Wojciech Shabilski. Uh, he joins me now live from Warsaw. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here on the program today. Now, Poland, I'm assuming, went into the meeting today with the most requests as it's under direct threat of having the conflict spill over into its territory and also being the country carrying the weight of the refugee crisis. Indeed, Poland is uh, uh, heavily relying on NATO solidarity and uh, meaningful response, which uh, would translate to um, unity on sanctions, increased sanctions uh, from the West, but more importantly of uh, deploying uh, more troops, possibly uh, permanent uh, NATO troop presence across Central Europe uh, to increase the resilience of those countries in term uh, in in um, in uh, what is possible, but but hopefully not going to happen as a as some sort of hybrid tactics uh, in the vicinity. NATO has completely ruled out a no-fly zone, but that was supported by Poland, and Poland was also going to bring up the possibility of sending peacekeepers to Ukraine. These are all moves that. Russia would presumably directly retaliate to. Why is Poland supporting these moves when it knows that it'll be the first one to pay the price of any possible conflict with Russia? Poland is uh, responding firstly to the needs of, uh, of our neighbors, uh, Ukraine, putting forward the proposals that would, in an ideal situation, uh, secure the population of Ukraine from uh, attacks uh, from bombs and rockets that uh, uh, kill innocents, and that uh, uh, that motivates uh, the um, highly idealistic uh, plans for NATO involvement in protecting civilians and refugees primarily. Now uh, there are serious considerations how still NATO could provide more security to Ukraine. But first and foremost, uh, it is also a consideration how not to get engaged in direct military confrontation with Russia, at least at this stage, when Russia hasn't shot the first bullet uh, towards NATO. And we know that Biden is going to be in Poland tomorrow. And while his visit is to show appreciation to the people of Poland, he will also be holding bilateral talks with his counterpart. What kind of support do you think that we can see the U.S. provide to Poland? Poland is um, on, you know, on a high agenda, particularly for two reasons. One is the refugee crisis. No one has imagined, uh, first of all, uh, of the uh, civil society bottom-up solidarity that has been shown, that has been demonstrated by local governance, by NGOs, by activists who took on their shoulders the burden of accommodating uh, most of the two million people across Poland in different localities where government stepped in to uh, to help, uh, to aid, but was unable as a central government simply to, to take it on uh, themselves. Now they're bringing some relief. And U.S. support in that terms, also U.S. management of refugees will be highly appreciated with the uh, the know-how, the uh, the structures and organizations that may come in place. And mm -hmm. secondly, that there is a second reason, which is uh, military defensive uh, posture of uh, of U.S. Uh, U.S. Army present on the Polish grounds, uh, also across Central Eastern Europe, and the uh, pledge to increase or to stabilize its presence for much longer mm -hmm. will be uh, of a soothing effect for, uh, for for Polish concerns. Do you think that that would happen? That Poland would push uh, the other members of the alliance to make a decision in having those U.S. troops that are temporarily in Poland for the time being stay there permanently? I think so. This is not only in uh, in the perspective, important in the perspective of Poland, but predominantly it is important for the Baltic states, uh, three countries, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and the so-called Suwałki gap, which uh, links Poland and Lithuania on the, on the north of the country, um, are in a very sensitive uh, position, especially that we have a highly militarized Kaliningrad region uh, the land owned by Russia, which is uh, um, missing a, a land bridge that Russians have at some point indicated would be 
something they would like to gain, dividing NATO territories in half. So against this, against any territorial uh, shifts or uh, geopol geopolitical shifts, as Russia call it, um, NATO countries in the region call on uh, increased uh, uh, reassurances uh, from all mm. of the alliance and, uh, and permanent stationing of, um, of the troops. Okay, Wojciech Shabilski, thank you so much for joining us here on the News Hour and sharing that insight with us.